welcome to yet another video of cook from scratch so so proud of you for showing up today especially today because today's question is actually a very very small variation of the question that we did yesterday when you will see today's question will go like it's exactly the same question but it is not and that is why today's your test i want to see whether you are able to identify the difference between the two questions yourself whether you are able to write the code yourself whether you are able to pass all the test cases or not so pause when i tell you the question think about you know how it is different what change will you make in the code it's a very small variation but an extremely important one without which you will not be able to understand recursion properly so let's see whether you are able to do or not let's get started so this is the question that we are going to discuss today we are given a set of positive integers we have to find all its subsets so if you think about it it's actually the same question isn't it because see here what are the subsets possible it is 1 1 2 1 3 is also a subset so it doesn't have to be uh, continuous so it's like finding subsequences of string itself right isn't this like power set itself so here actually see they have actually denoted the null element also so they are including the case where there was no uh, character included remember where in the last question we had to delete that in this question we are actually supposed to include that also so that is why there will be eight possible subsets isn't that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so yes there are eight subsets just like there were eight subsequences in the last question so it's actually the exactly same question but there is one place where you will have to make code change and i want you to identify that where that will be and i want you to tell me whether you made that mistake or not okay so let's try writing the code and let's see so we are given a vector over here instead of given a string okay so we have to find the vector of vector of it why is this because see that was basically here we were finding vector of string here we are finding so our string is basically vector of integers string is basically what it's like vector of characters so here instead of vector of characters we are dealing with vector of integers in simple terms yes that is the difference you should be able to understand these are small small things so that you know when you are given the variations you are able to understand it say we are actually doing medium level questions so you should be proud of yourself so yep we will store our answer in a vector of vector of integers and we are going to call it res as usual we are going to return our res from here okay so in our helper function what all do we pass you should be able to write at least this much by yourself for sure so first we need to pass the vector that we are dealing with right so this vector we can pass see we actually don't have to make any changes in this but we are just avoiding making copies of it by passing it by value and we are passing it by reference itself but we are actually not going to make any changes in this vector obviously okay so you should know these details that okay why are we passing by reference why not okay so you should be able to tell this then obviously we have to pass the result also where we are going to store and here we are going to make changes so we are passing by reference what else do we need to pass we need to pass the index at which we will be there so we will go through this vector index by index so we will start from 0 1 2 3 and so on right we, we could pass the index also but let's see whether we can do without it and what else do we need to pass we need to pass the current subset that we are dealing with in which we are going to make changes right so there also we were calling it what current string so here we are going to call it current vector since we are going to be making changes in that we are passing by reference right okay now let's try writing a code again there are two cases include exclude what will be our base condition what was the base condition whenever our index becomes equal to n what is n it is basically size of the vector that is given to us so size of the vector so whenever we are here we know that okay there is no element present at this index so we need to return from here and before returning what do we have to do we have to fill our result vector so what do we do in that we have to push back whatever is there in the current subset okay so we will do that and from here we will return okay now let's get to our two cases what are the two cases one is inclusion one and one is exclusion one right so we have to do these two cases this is like the basic if you have not understood this you have to like go through the videos again and you have to have to understand this because this is the basic of a lot of questions so basically each element we are going to try including it and excluding it so which element are we dealing with right now we are dealing with the element at the index i and d okay so what do we do we first include it so what is our current subset our current subset is basically current this c u r r so what are we going to do in this current we are going to push back the uh, element present at index so what are we going to do we are going to do this 
and then what will we do we are going to call our helper we are going to do a we are going to call for the next index and then what are we going to pass we are going to pass res we are going to pass connect okay now we come to the exclusion part what what do we do in the exclusion part we don't have to include in the current subset right so we can just call our helper we pass this we pass the next index we pass res and we pass correct and that's it so i think we have written our recursive code is it because this was the same thing that we wrote in the last question also let's try running it let's finish our code and let's try running it and see okay so here i am going to call the helper function i am going to pass a to it i'm going to initially pass the index and i'm going to pass the res plus i need to make a current subset also that i am going to um make changes to right so initially it will be empty only i don't need to push anything uh, our helper function will take care of it i just need to make it and send it uh, do i need to make any other changes no see in the last one we had to pass it in lexicographically sorted order we had to make sure that we don't include the null element here we don't have to do anything so without making any changes we can actually compile it and see whether this works or not see so this was the input this is our output and this is the expected output so we are going wrong somewhere where are we going wrong and if you notice we are including 2 3 2 3 we are including 3 too many times over here right if you see the output difference we are including something too many times why where are we doing that and why is this happening pause and think about it think about you know what has to be done in the question you should be able to identify yourself if you are able to visualize the tree you should be able to tell me okay you should be able to identify that why do we have to do that so for that let's get back to the diagram that we had drawn in the previous question let's try to understand that okay what is the difference over here so this is the diagram that we saw the last time right so here a was a now corresponds to actually 1 b corresponds to 2 and c corresponds to 3 right so here see what did we do our current was a and then from here in our next helper function what did we actually do we passed current plus s of index or we just passed current right so here we are passing current plus s of index and here we are passing current now notice the difference over here when we pass it over here also we are passing a only and we pass it over here also we are passing a only similarly here when we pass we are passing ab only when we pass over here we are passing ab only right so that is why the, that is the difference over here so in this case what is happening is here we are dealing with a vector and what did we do in our vector 1 was there so now to come over here right to go in this case we pushed 2 basically how we added b here right we pushed 2 and now we went ahead in this tree and we came back right so when we came back what happened our vector still looked like 1 2 only and then we passed 1 2 to it so this 2 was extra so now instead of passing a we are sort of passing ab and that is the difference between last question and this question see let me explain this once more see when we pass our current value to the include part and to the exclude part we are passing the current as it is so in the include part we were passing current plus s of index and in the exclude part we were just passing current right while going to the next level but here what we are doing is since our current is actually a vector so when we so in our vector earlier one was there and when we went to the include part we pushed two to it now when we come back and when we go to the right part that is when we go to the exclude part what should we be doing we should be removing this two right so and this is why the details are so important and this is why the visualization is so so important because this small detail can actually ruin your entire solution see from here also uh, your current was basically a when you are passing over here and when you are passing over here the current value remains a only so now here you will uh, you will add ac and you will not add c but the current value is a only but in our case what we are doing is when we are over here and when we pass one and while coming back when we are coming back from here this instead of just one we now have one three right see what was happening when we go over here inside this our current was only one when we come back our current had actually become 1 3 so we don't want to pass 1 3 to it we want to pass only 1 so this is why what will we do we have to 
pop back this three. What? So let's see our code now, how our code is going to change. So see in our code here, in this current, when we were pushing index, before going to the exclude part, before going to the right part of the recursive tree, what do I need to do? I need to do current dot pop back. Now let's compile and see whether this works or not. Okay, so there is difference. I think they are expecting the output in lexicographically sorted manner. Yes, it is. Okay, I did not read it properly. Yes, they are expecting. So what do we do when we have to return in lexicographically sorted manner? Yes, we are going to just sort our answer, right? So we are going to just do sort of res begin and sort res not end and we are going to return it. See, these details you won't understand if you haven't watched last video. So you have to watch it to understand this properly, okay? So yeah, now this works. Let's try submitting. So yeah, this works. Uh, to quickly explain lexicographically sorted manner once more. So in, see one comes in the dictionary before two. So all the elements starting with one come before all the elements starting with two comes before all the elements starting with three. Space is smaller than two and then uh, space is again smaller than three. And that is why these are like lexicographically sorted. So if you see the null one is the first limit and the last limit is three. Okay. So yes, this worked. And this was the catch over here. How many of you were able to do it yourself or not? I want you to be honest. This is why visualization is extremely important. See, uh, one another small thing that I think many of you will get confused. What if we did the exclude part first? Like what if we did something like this? Then do we have to pop back or not? So for this, basically now what am I doing? While visualizing my tree, you try making the exclude part on the left side and include part on the right side. Till now what we were doing, we were always drawing the include part on the left side and we were drawing the exclude part on the right side. But that is up to us. We can make it however we want. So now I want you to try the opposite way. Try visualizing it. And I want you to tell me whether you were able to understand or not that, okay, in that case also we will have to pop back. Why? Because it's still going back and somewhere we have to start from the tree. Our current value should still go back to the state it was in. Because when we backtrack, we, when we have added the current value this, to this result, we need to go back and we need to reset the current value. So this is an important point. You should be very, very clear with it. You should be able to visualize it very properly. If you have any doubt, let me know. I'm here to clear all the doubts. Okay. Tomorrow we are going to pick up a harder question. So this should be completely clear. And tomorrow we are going to do a question which is actually very common in interviews. So I hope you will show up tomorrow also. And let me know how you are liking this series. See you tomorrow.